maggots have gained massive popularity over the last few years for big carp fishing. You've been doing some real damage with maggots recently. Yeah, you, yeah, it's something I've only really got into this year, really, since it's turned turned a bit wintery. Yeah. Um, they really do seem to take over waters in the winter at the moment, yeah, you know, yeah. um, if they're used in quantity. Uh, and I found these brilliant, these little artificials. Excellent. Really well. They, they, they um, look so realistic. They do, they? they do. I mean, if you put some in your hand and just give them a slight bit of movement, you know, the job yeah. to tell them from real maggots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously it just makes the fishing so much easier uh, in as much as you're not threading live maggots and mucking around trying to do little knots yeah, on that yeah. with them. <clears throat> you can use any sort of rig with them, um, just your normal, anything you use a boilie on really, just yes. replace them with this. Yeah. But um, I like to use my little sliding ring. Right. Uh, and I put together a little rig which I'm quite happy with and caught quite a few fish over the last few weeks on. So. Yeah, brilliant. I'll show you. What, why do you think they're so popular in the winter? Is it because there's less weed, so they're less likely to crawl off into the weed, or is it just I don't easily think they digestible? I don't think they crawl very far, to no, be honest, no. but they do seem to work better without weed. Yeah. I've definitely yeah. found like in silty areas they work a lot better. Yeah. Um, I don't know quite what it is, really. I mean, the boilies work really well right up until... Uh, the water temperatures drop, yeah. and then st people start using maggots, and they just seem to take over for a little while. Yeah. But um, and it doesn't go through to the spring. Come the spring, the fish won't bait again. That's it. You know, yeah. it's just a bit yeah. of a seasonal thing. So you can show us the little rig you've been yep, doing well on. Excellent. Um, I mean, usually myself, I use red and white maggots. Yeah. Mixed for no particular reason. It's just a personal thing. A yeah. lot of people swear by just white ones. Um, but let's get the right little mix of maggots here. Okay, him, him, him. Yeah. They do look like they're going to crawl off the table. They do, though, don't they? they? <laughs> right, what I do is I get a small sliding ring. Yeah. Just pick that up there. Here's one you prepared earlier. Yeah, it is, because it's a bit fiddly to yeah. do on camera. And literally just tie um, a blood knot on there, or any, yes. any knot you're happy with, and loop the end with a baiting needle. Same, right. It's just like a normal, like it would for yeah. a normal boiler, yeah. just a normal loop like that. Okay. What's that, about just under an inch long, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. not crucial, and you'll see yeah. why in a minute. What I do is I take one maggot, and thread that through the body of the maggot, sideways on. Right. And then pop that. You're not nicking it, then? You're sort of properly... No, right through yeah, it, right yeah, through it. Yeah. And then pop that on there. Slide that right down to the bottom. Like that. Right. Well, you can do it with more. Than, I use two maggots, but you can do it with more than. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other maggot is going to go on lengthways. Oh, I see. But so you can use three. And have yeah. Them like that. It's entirely up to you. And all you do is lay that next to the hair, work out roughly where your, your hair is going to exit the yeah, maggot. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I like the look of that. And Already. Then, then go in. Usually I go in on the inside of the curve, just right. gives you somewhere to put the bait in there, uh, to put the boilie stop. Pop that through there, slide that all the way down. Out the middle of the bottom. Yeah. Fire that through there. Slide that down. And out. You can force that right the way down just to give you enough room to put the hair stop in and then tease it up into position afterwards. With a fairly thick braid, you'd probably almost get away without using a hair stop, wouldn't you? I would have thought. Oh, it's it's not really going to slide no, off. It's no, not really. Just it's for just, peace of yeah. mind, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it's very unlikely that yeah. it's ever going to come yeah. off of there. Just pop that through there. And tease your mega. Oops. A bit fiddly. So that's what you start with. That's neat. Now this you can mount on any any sort of hook of yeah, your choice, yeah. really. But I find a nice light hook, um, something like this G4. Yeah. It's ideal for it. Yeah, they're quite fine in the water. Yeah, they are. They? Yeah. So they are quite quite a light pattern. With this, I use some of the coated braid strip tips. Yeah. Into that. 
straighten that out a bit. A little bit of friction, doesn't yeah. it? Straightens it's out quite easily, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Just that little bit of warmth from the friction just yeah. takes away the curve where it's been on the spool. Yeah. You've got to be careful with this coated braid, with all coated braids, not to give it too much friction because mm. obviously you'll melt the outer yeah. coating. Yeah. Just take a small section on the end. Strip that off. He's stripping off what, about three inches there? Yeah. yeah. It depends how much of a, a soft section you, yeah, you want. Yeah, how much of a hinge. You're yeah. not doing a no knot on this, no right. or a knotless knot, so you don't need too much strip I back. See. Yeah. What I do there, in fact, the easiest way is if you thread a small maggot on first before you do the knot. The idea of this, this is going to work like a liner liner. I see. And yeah. It's going to slide down over yeah, the knot. It's like not a bit shrink there, almost, yeah. yeah. You can do it with shrink tube. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just as easy to do it with one of these. Some of these have got got that sort of perfect curve in them. Yeah, yeah. You look through tube. the packet and you can find the, the ideal yeah, one. Yeah, they've got different shapes and sizes. Yeah. Just get that on there ready. Slide him up out of the way while you tie your knot. And it's not of choice, really, you know, it wouldn't yeah. make any difference whether it was a Palomar knot or a tuck blood knot or, you know, whatever you're most happy out, with. Yeah. yeah, whatever you're happy with. I tend to use a tuck blood for... For bright, yeah. yeah. well, for near enough yeah, everything, everything, really. It's one of the first knots I ever learnt and, yeah. I, and I've been happy with it ever since, really. As long as you tuck the end, stops anything sliding. Slide that down like that. Trim the end off with a nice sharp pair of scissors. Slide that down. Twist him round so that the line's coming out yeah. of the front. Yeah. Just pop that down over the end of the knot like that. That nice. There's a line yeah. liner on the hook, yeah. extend the shank. Help the hook turn. And yeah. also gives you a buffer for the back of the slide. Right, ring. I see. Yeah, neat. And just pop that on there. Like that. Right. And you just need a small float stop on the front of the hook. Okay. Stop him coming off the front. So those maggots just sit up. Um, yeah, I mean, they're not going to lift. It's not yeah, it's intended. It will just literally sit up like that. Yeah, so it's, it's almost acting as a signal, just sitting up a little yeah. visual thing. And well, it's sitting amongst in the amongst maggots. the other maggots, yeah, which yeah, are, are yeah. wiggling about, and it's just coming up slightly. And they're so soft to the feel, I mean, if they feel like maggots yeah, as yeah. well. You know, a fish comes in, touches that with its lip, it. it's just going to have it straight That's away. That's right. If, especially uh, like, say... It's just going to lift the hook, you know, as soon yeah. as they suck them in, it's just oh, going yeah, to fly yeah, straight, it's going straight in. Yeah, yeah. 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 Especially if you use that with um, a little tiny PVA bag of maggots. Yeah. Only like walnut size. Yeah. And just pop a stop on the end there. It's not an exact science, doesn't have to go through dead central yeah. or anything, it's just literally as a stop. Slide that round. Just position that on the back of the bend there. And that'll just stop it going too yeah. far forward. Yeah. Gives you a little bit of travel once the hook takes hold and they blow that out the right, way. Yeah, a little sort of blowback yeah. style rig. Yeah, yeah, nice. Really, very, very simple. Like I say, topped off with a tiny little PVA bag full of maggots, fished over a couple of spots full of bait. Brilliant. Lovely little rig. Yeah, you can see that's going to work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I say, as long as you twist that round so that comes out the front, so as it goes over, that's going to spin around yeah. and hook in. Neat. Quite simple to tie. Yeah. And very Brilliant. effective. Excellent, thanks mate. So there you go, another very simple rig, but it's deadly effective. Um, so if you're giving the maggots a try this winter, that's one to have a go with.